Noreen Sumter from Beyond Potential, live life your way. And you can't see me. I'm not in the camera. I'm like way, uh, where am I? I'm far, far away from the camera. Anyway, um, tonight my show is going to be with Garrison Red of the Garrison Red Project. And um, Garrison is like an internet or Instagram I'm just going to call you an Instagram sensation. Everybody watches you. You know, I might as well just like be real about it. And so uh, tonight we're going to be talking to him. But first, I want to talk about my week. All right. Well, I can't, can we move over a bit so I can see myself in the camera? You know, I like to see myself. Oh, oh, oh my <laughs> uh, Okay. So, oh, I'm all over the place, right? Maybe we should turn it a little bit. Yeah, like that. There so you that's go. Good. Oh, I'm kind of halfway cut off. But anyway, I'll come over this way. So my week has been oh, very, not stressful, but I've been working out really hard. And I worked out hard on Friday with Garrison. And you'll find out why it was hard later on. And um, I've been changing my diet. I've been eating a lot of greens, a lot of vegetables, a lot of uh, salad, you know, protein. I'm cutting my eating off at seven o'clock because I'm really committed to reducing my diabetes. I don't know if many of you know, but I was diagnosed with diabetes almost three years ago. And, um, you know, when you get diagnosed with something, you sort of go the whole hog and you like, you do all the work and you're like, you're rah, rah about it. And then as soon as you get some really good results, well, this is me. As soon as I got really good results and my, my blood sugars went from 10 to like 6.5, I, I jumped off the horse, right? Well, actually, truthfully, I didn't like how thin I was. I really didn't like it. Like I'm a big robust woman and I like to have my stature to be robust. I was very thin when I was younger. And so I had it, my butt is like nice and big. And then what happened was it got really small and I didn't like, well, compared to some people, it got really small and I didn't like it. But what happens is fat and diabetes doesn't go together. So I'm back on the mission to reduce the weight and get that in check. But what I've decided is that like, I am not taking metformin. I'm gonna do it all with diet and exercise. And it is doable. And I was, you know, been doing a lot of research and uh, I just found out that like the Diabetes Association and, you know, like all these organizations, I don't know if they're really for us. I mean, like, I don't know what their mission is about because I've been looking at some of the diets that they've been saying for me to eat and it has a lot of bread and a lot of carbs in it and bread and carbs spike insulin, which, you know, increases my sugar. So I just have to sort of find alternative methods to sort of manage myself and manage my diet. But anyway, that's what I've been up to this week is like really retraining myself, my mind, my body to take care of myself in a way that, um, you know, the medical institutions are there to help us to maintain or manage health. They're not, I don't feel that they're actually here interested in, in us being well. Um, so I'm just not interested in taking all these pills. If every time I go, it's another pill, not interested, just not interested. If I should die, then I just die, but I'm going to do the best that I can do. Do you, you hear me? Like, yeah, if you I just should, die. You if just I die. Did, look, let like, me tell you what's something. going on let, here? Like, like, no, let me say this. <laughs> let me say this. I'm going to die if I keep on taking all these medications, right? Because after a while, your liver can't manage it. Your kidneys can't manage it. And most people die medication. of like the medications, right? Yeah. And so if I go, have to change my diet and change my lifestyle, yeah. then I'll do that for the rest of my life. Yeah. As opposed yeah, that's to, smart. Yeah, that's smart. As opposed to like be pumping myself up with drugs. Like every time I shake, like, like the, the pills are rattling around. I'm not doing it. Right. So whatever it takes for me to get myself in shape is what I'm going to do, you know, and it takes consistency. And that's something that I have to learn. Right. Yeah. It's something that I have to put into practice and it's not going to be easy. No days off, though. Right. That's it's not going to be easy. No, I, mean, I know it's not easy. It's not no, easy. it's not easy. But, you know, I'm going to do it. It's like today, you know, I was eating cherries, right? Not today. But I've been eating cherries. Every time I go, I steal a cherry or two or buy some cherries. But today, I looked at the cherry and I said, no. Because that one cherry literally spikes my insulin. 
Oh yeah, you can. So, so you know, that. fruit. I love fruit, but I'm gonna have to find fruits that don't spike yeah. it. Yeah. Anyway, less of me and more of the show. So tonight, like I said, I have Garrison Red. If you haven't seen him on Instagram, then I don't know what you've been doing, but <laughs> but he is all over Instagram. So Garrison Red is the founder of the Garrison Red Project. Yep. And he's gonna tell you more about that. Um, I'm just going to go straight into the show and introduce, have Garrison introduce himself. So Garrison, introduce yourself. How you doing, everybody? I'm Garrison Red. I'm the, like she said, I'm the founder of the Garrison Red Project. Um, I'm also here with Garfield yeah. Williams. It's my cousin. Well, it's yeah. more like your brother, right? Yeah, it's yes. more like my brother. We're like brothers. Right. And um, we're here today to tell you about our organization and how we're trying to improve the quality of life for everyone right. in this world. And also, we're, Garrison's going to share with us his story because his story, your story is like um, the kind of stories that we hear about, we read about, you know, young man gets hit by a random bullet or yeah. young man dies from a random bullet or something like that. Your situation is that you got hit what how many years ago 17 years yeah i was ago? 17 so when i was 13 years ago right so 13 years ago garrison got hit by a stray bullet yeah in your community you want to yeah say across the street from my house right i was outside on a random summer night and some guy came up and started shooting at everybody that was on the steps right yeah so um when so he, he started was literally shooting, shooting yeah at people at the step was he mad that's how that's how life is Back in the day, growing yeah. up in Brownsville, okay. Brooklyn, right? So life he's, he's is from Brownsville, Brooklyn, right? Yeah, that part of Brooklyn, and growing up in those communities like the South Bronx, certain places, um, in Harlem. Ten years ago, it was like rough, right? Um, I mean, like you heard about that kid Junior recently that the was cut up with the machete. That was like every day. Right. Stuff like that occurs. It's just that people don't bring attention to it because it's not gl glamorized on the news. Right. Like if the kid didn't die in a horrific manner or if it, or is it more like if it didn't happen in an, a neighborhood that was affluent or a neighborhood that was not yeah. black or something like that yeah. it happened in midtown Manhattan, that would be a whole different, that's a different story. Right. So yeah. Hit the news. It's a crisis. Right. But in those areas it's okay. Is, and is it like swept an under the rug and you go to the hospital and, from the hospital, you go back home and you just back in the community again. Right. And it was like, it's like a cycle there. Right. So what was, so here you are, you're what, 13? I'm 17 at the time. Sorry, 17 yeah. at the time. And you get hit by this bullet. Did you know you were hit? Is it? Yeah, I knew and it. It's not it, like it TV. It's not, it's nothing like TV. It's not, you don't get no girls, no piano playing. <laughs> None of that. Like it's it's nothing There's like no soundtrack. No soundtrack. None of that. It's right. hot. It's a hundred. Your body. It's like it's a heat that you can't imagine. Like right. if you you feel like you're in an oven. Right. I feel like I'm in an oven right now. But no, no, it's oven. hotter than that. Okay. If you think this is an oven, is it's like ten times hotter than that. But right. yeah. So this was in. Where did the bullet go? Right above my hip. And it passed through my body and it was lodged under my armpit. So it was like it went diagonal. Correct. Right. Yeah. And then so what did it sear on the way? It burnt like some of the nerves around my spinal cord. Oh, so on the way back, what on the way up? Yeah, on the way when it was passing through my body, it passed obviously through my spine, passed by my spine because right. that's in the center of your body. Right. So when it passed by, it burnt some of the nerves like surrounding it. Right. Yeah. And so were you unconscious? You know, no, I was completely conscious through the whole thing. Right. Yeah, I was completely conscious through the whole thing. I, I didn't panic or anything like right. that. I mean, because you always hear if you panic with certain things, like that's, that's what causes you to lose your life or whatever right, if you right. panic. So they, you try not to panic. Right. But, yeah, it, it goes in you and you feel it. It's hot. So how how many months? I just want to give people a general yeah. idea of what you know took place. So how many how long were you in the hospital? I was in the rehab hospital for about a year. It was like almost eleven and a half months. Yeah. Right. So in the rehab hospital, what did you have to learn to do? It's just basically everything. Like you just you have to learn a lot of the new things because like 
which one thing with a back injury, like you can't really do much for the like immediately after, right? Because they want to make sure all like the fractures and stuff stay in place, right? Because you could damage your spine even more, right? If you know you move around, um, thank God it didn't hit my spine, but like I had still bones like surrounding the area right. that was fractured and injured. So with that said, I had to wear like a back brace for like like two and a half, three months. And then your just body just changed because now you have a foreign object in your body as well. What was, what was with the bullet? Yeah, the bullet was still in me. Mm-hmm. I got the bullet taken out like two years after the incident occurred. Right. But um, the bullets in, so that's like just changed the dynamics of your body as well. Um, you got a piece of lead in your body. So, you, you know, in, in the beginning, you could experience different like issues such as like fevers right. and just imbalances with your body as well. And then, you know, after the injury, um, certain things you got to recoup because you're not standing on your feet as much right. no more. So your circulation changes right. and things of that nature changes where with that, with that said, when that changes, like you got to learn how to live your life right. in a different way and in different form. Right. So a lot of things you take for granted, like your sitting balance, like your ordinarily when you sit down. Nobody takes for like the muscles that's sit. working. You, right. you just sit down on a chair. You think your your bust, your like your back muscles, your glute muscles, they automatically engage. Right. But when you had an injury such as the one I did, a spinal cord injury, a lot of those muscles disappear right. and atrophy. So right. it's they become a lot weaker than the average person. So right. you got to learn how to sit and stuff like that. Just a lot of things over. Right. Yeah. Wow. That's that's pretty deep. I, I, what can I say? That is, yeah. Yeah, but see, if you think about it, though, like. But life is really it, critical. It right? could get, yeah. So the harder, the more you accomplish in regards to adversity. Right. For the, the further you could go. Right. The more you, with you know, adversity. So you want to have an adverse situation early in life. Because once you get over that, then in your mind, you can accomplish anything. Right. And that's how my mind is set up, like everything I can accomplish. All right. So we're <laughs> going to take a break and then we'll be right back. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Are you stuck in a rut? Negative thoughts, feelings, and conversations got you down? Hi, I'm Noreen Sumter, The Potentiator. Tune in every Tuesday at 9 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time and listen for new ideas on my show, Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way, on talkradio.nyc. Who do you want to connect with? Are you an entrepreneur or intrapreneur looking to build your following? Welcome to our show. Follow Follow Me Friday Friday with Joan and Priya. Tune in every Friday at noon Eastern on talkradio.nyc. We're We're your digital connectors. connectors. Woo woo! What's that? (laughs) Talking Alternative Radio. 24 hours a day. Hi, and we're back. This is Noreen Sumter from Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way. And tonight we're speaking with Garrison Red from the Red Garrison Garrison Red Red Project. Project. Yep, yep, yep. So welcome to the show. And introduce your cousin. Yeah, and this is the assistant director, Garfield Williams. So Garfield is like the ninja. He's like the man in the background. You never really see him. 
And, um, but you know, well, I knew he was there. I, you know, I know he's there, but I didn't know he was there until Friday. <laughs> I really had it that you were doing everything on your own. Oh no, nah, no! Everybody knows he's always with me. Okay, like, so you want to say hi to the hi to your peeps? How you doing, everybody? Yeah, I've been with him since yeah, babies. yeah, since we wow. was babies. You know. So what was it like for you when you know you he, you heard about his injury, or were you with him that day? No, I wasn't with him. Um, when I heard about it, I, I was actually at football practice. Mm-hmm. I was like fourteen playing football, and I heard about it then, and. I mean, I don't know. I'm not really like a p- emotional person like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I felt the way, but like I didn't cry anything. I just wanted to, you know what I mean? Make sure See how did. he was good. Right. And yeah. I visited him and everything was all right. Yeah. And what was even cool, I ended up going to like my freshman year in high school, the same high school he been to. Yeah. So we ended up having the same friends. So I'm cool with all the seniors as a freshman. Right. Mostly at the whole school because of him. Yeah. Like because right. of me and him. So, like, some of our friends, we would leave from, like, school or whatever, and we visit them at the hospital. So you had a community. Yeah. You had a community of people yeah. around you. Yeah. No, well, people like this guy. Yeah. 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 This whole, like, yeah. people yeah. like, this is the guy to be around. Yeah. Fun guy. I mean, I'm, I'm a good person. I just, you know, I always been a good person and right. spread positivity and good vibes. Like, I... I don't really have a problem with like meeting friends and stuff like that. Like right. people sometimes is like socially awkward. I'm like social they, butterfly. Yeah, I'm not really like that. Like right. everybody is cool to me. Everybody starts off on a good foot with me. Cool. Well, yeah. we they do, right? You yeah. know what's so um fascinating about um meeting you and having this conversation is that it seems you know, when my sh- with my shows it feels as though I'm having a show and then all of a sudden these people come up out of the woodwork. Like I start to meet people who are in wheelchairs. I start to yeah. meet people who have had a similar situation. It's more prevalent than we actually know. Yeah, right? it is. It and is. And so it's really good. I why I wanted to bring you onto the show was one, because you're so positive, you're in a wheelchair, this thing happened to you. Yeah. Right. You were you know, I had it that you were born that nah, way. I wasn't right. Born. This thing happened to you. But you are not the kind of person that's gonna sit around and like crying your soup. Oh no, nah. my mother, he would have no who's gonna let me do that? Right. Like there's nobody that's around that's really gonna let me do and that wasn't the type of person I am. Like right. I can't stay in one spot stagnated just because of life. Like right. what you gonna do? You gonna stay there or you gonna get over whatever you gotta get over. Life goes on. So I want you to share with us your accolades, right? So you did a TED Talk. Yeah, I did a TED Talk. Awesome. Um, I did a Ignite. Tell us so. how you did the TED Talk. All right, so this is how no, I did this. I want you to tell Let us t- t- how you actually got to this Let point. me tell you how I got here, to right. be honest. Yeah. All right, so like to about a, a little, yeah, working at the ARG for the government. And um, I had an epiphany at work one day, like, I, I need to be doing something, you know, outdoors helping people because I felt as if, I was too cool to just be behind a computer all my life. Like I have an outgoing personality, you know, and a lot of people just gravitate towards me. So I said, you know, I needed to be doing something bigger and something for a cause. So I was like talking to my cousin, of course, Mm -hmm. like, yo, we got to do something big. You know what? How does mayor sound? But we just throwing an idea around at this point. Like we not thinking nothing of it. So then uh, we do a photo shoot for my godfather's clothing line called Courtesy Of. Oh, okay. So we do the photo shoot for Courtesy Of, and I met my boys. Like, these became, like, one of my closest, closer friends. Instantly. Yeah. It's Ben and Justin from Milf Dad. Right, right. This is when they just had an idea of the clothing line. It wasn't so much it was already, like, out in in production. They just started, like, um, you know, promoting it and marketing it. So they like, yo, look, come to a Milf, photo. M I L F D A D. For those of y'all that's tuned in, it's on my hat right here. If you got video, however. But yeah, it's Milf Dad. So they like, yeah, you could be like a brand ambassador or something. So I'm like, that sounds like a good idea. I am fashionable, so mm-hmm. I'm all for it. He's so been we, in fashion shows. So he's we, been on the run. Yeah, we do a we do a photo shoot, and the photo shoot got like good feedback. 
So and it it had a milf dad wheelchair and everything. It, this was legit. Like it was they came out. ready. Yeah. They came ready. So but they just we just connected like we had similar goals and so we just connected off of that. Around the same time, a little bit after about a week or two after we started saying like what we going to do? Like we got to think of a new career plan. Like we got to be doing something where we helping people. We go do a fashion show with MILF dad for Fashion Week Brooklyn. And this is how I meet Ricky. Right. And that's a great, became a great friend of mine. He so, yeah. the, the He's like one of our mentors. So, uh, yeah. Ricky is real cool. I like Ricky. I like <laughs> yeah. Ricky. Cool. So, I meet Ricky there, but we, we just chit chat. But it's crazy how the world works. Like, the world, this world is crazy. And when I think about it and tell people how the world works, I think they think I'd be playing, but right. I'm like, nah, this is coming out in a book. Right. I'm going to do you a were book ready. soon. But yeah, that's one thing about success. It's like when preparation meets opportunity. So I met Ricky and Ricky um, forwarded me, gave my name to this lady called Connie Chi. Mm -hmm. I love Connie. Connie, Connie. the show next week. Connie, Ooh. yeah. Connie. Connie's the one that like put the, put the battery. battery like <laughs> the remote we had the remote we just needed the battery something to get us to go yeah that was connie connie got us to go like we meet her at starbucks anybody knows when you have a meeting at starbucks this is about to be a meeting that's going to change your life yeah. that's how we look at starbucks in the hood you at starbucks <laughs> this is going to change starbucks your life in the hood. it will change your life mind yeah. you i have my bachelor's in finance and everything so but i was like that doesn't matter. Like, if you're not helping people, it doesn't matter what accolades you have. Right. It's, it means nothing. So, boom. And I was working out in the gym. So, this is how I was prepared already. So, I meet with Connie. Me and Garfield meet with Connie at Starbucks. And she's like, yo, what y'all do? Y'all like y'all jobs and stuff? So, we like, nah, nah Connie. We've been we <laughs> this been bothering us for about the last year. Like she, you don't understand. That's like a like a guardian angel. Like God said, this right. you need her. You're so, talking to a coach. Yeah, so, so I understand. I'm like, so she's like, yo, what y'all like? Y'all could do something like impactful. So I'm like, yeah. I, did I start playing with the navigators yet? No, not yet. I, I don't even think not the navigators yet. was yet. yet. All right, so What's this is still that's the team I play for. Oh, okay. The the Paralympic team, okay. um, sports club. Okay, so. This is still, yeah, early. Look. So he's a Paralympian. So this is like, yeah, this is like, must be like September, October, right before the fashion show started, like the fashion, the New York Fashion Week. So we meet with Connie. Connie's like, y you should do something like a TED Talk. So I'm like, a TED Talk? What is that? Right. Garfield starts telling me. Talk. Yeah, he's like, yo, we got to go watch them, bro. They like inspiring individuals that come on the show and just talk about a variety of topics right. topics so i'm like okay so i'm like connie i'm gonna do the ted talk she like yeah you gotta apply to them and stuff like that so me i'm like if that's all you gotta tell me you gotta just tell me point me in a direction i'll do the rest you don't right. have to do anything else yeah so she's like yeah you gotta start an organization get like a website i swear no lie within two weeks from me and connie we had the website up and running Business cards. It was a lot. Though. And it, it was like the birth of the Garrison Red Project was mm -hmm. like right then and there, right in that Starbucks. That's when the idea hit us. And we right. like, we're going to help, you know, different individuals. Right. It's not going to be, it's going to be inclusive. So it's not just going to be for disabled individuals. It's right. going to be for people suffering from depression, people that come from impoverished neighborhoods that feel there's no way out. Just a whole variety of different individuals that right. are just, different right and they need to be accepted and feel like they um included yes. in something so that's what that's why we started it so and that tell was us, the mission tell us about the ted talk and you can find his ted talk yeah garrison red on youtube it's it'll pop right up go to the garrison red project.org you'll see it there as well so the ted talk boom what happens with the ted talk is i apply they accepted me it was like around christmas time mm -hmm. so this is like so there, how many weeks is this? Probably like a month and a half. Okay. Like just things started evolving. Mm -hmm. But I knew I was going to get the TED Talk because I was just confident. Like right. when I just know 
You just knew. Yeah, I just know certain things. Like this was something I'm gonna get. Like the top, the topic was like someone overcoming adversity or triumphing through adversity or something of that nature. Right. So I'm like, perfect. Now, mind you, I never spoke on a stage of that magnitude before. I only spoke to like kids once at a school. Right. Nothing too crazy. But I was always how many people? It probably was like a hundred or more. Yeah. It was pretty big, but you know, with the lights on you, everybody looking at you. But that ain't where it wasn't worried about that because, like I said, I was prepared. I've been right. talking all my life. I right. could talk to a group of people. So it's like that was nothing. But so now I go to the TED talk and I was prepared. I was really prepared for it because my the title of the TED talk was Life is Like Lemonade. Right. How life could throw you lemons, you put some sugar some water, some ice, right. and you got a and sweet... the ice. Yeah, the people is the ice. That's right. the key, the people, because each ice cube <clears throat> represents an opportunity right. that someone from the outside gave you right. to make your lemonade, you know, fulfilling, and to that taste where it's nice and refreshing. So that's what I pretty much looked at, how I looked at my life. Like, right. I was basically saying, they threw me the lemons, I found some sugar, put some water with it, now I just need the ice, the opportunity right. from different individuals. So another way of showcasing yourself is through social media. Right. It's it's the most affordable way right. at the end of the day. Um, you don't have to pay for no ads. You don't have to pay for nothing. You just right. have to be yourself. Right. So I feel everywhere I went in life, not to sound like cocky or anything, but being myself got me far. Of course, because everybody else is taken. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like you said, everybody else is, but everybody liked me for being myself. Yeah, like, of course. They like, you're happy, enjoying your life. Like, and everybody around is like miserable. It's a lot of miserable. Why you think people. I'm always with him? Right. Yeah. I'm not miserable with him. He's not miserable. I'm not miserable with right. him. Like, and I wouldn't, like, I, I wouldn't let him get miserable. Well, I don't think you'd let <laughs> I wouldn't let, <laughs> you wouldn't let, nah, anyone there's leave. people that you just like, that's what you want. Misery yeah, loves company. Yeah, just leave them alone. And misery loves company. Right. You don't want to be that company no, now. No. I know there's people that you like, I ain't going around her today because she's just going to change my mood. Right. And what you, your mood is what you give off to the people in society. So you want to have a good mood at right. all times because people just feel, you don't get energy. They like feel that. Okay. So we've got one. We're going to take a break, and then yeah. we'll be right back, and you'll tell us more of his stories. Yeah, yeah, it gets better. It's getting better. <laughs> cool. All right, we'll be right back. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Are you into comics, movies, and pop culture at large? What about music and TV? Then you're in for a treat. This is Michael Dolce, your host on TalkingAlternative.com. I've been professionally writing comic books, screenplays, and music articles for almost 15 years. Catch my show, Secrets of the Sire, at its new primetime slot, Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and get the inside scoop on the pop culture universe you love to talk about. For more info, go to SecretsOfTheSire.com. Are you feeling unhappy with your body, shape, or size? Ever feel out of control with food? I'm Elizabeth Tripp, your host of Nourish the Soul. Join me to uncover the root to these imbalances and discover a permanent solution to living a healthy life. Join us every Wednesday at my new time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on talkradio.nyc. Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. Hi, welcome back. This is Noreen Sumter from Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way. And we're speaking to Garrison Red of the Garrison Red Project. And he is just telling us 
what what has happened in his life in the last what 11 months yeah 11 yeah, months exactly. and um exactly. it was from making a declaration and and saying that his life he was too cool to be sitting in an office yeah. and doing this work he wanted to make a difference in people's lives and um he was just ready and opportunity came and like he said he would he had the lemons yeah he got himself some sugar and we are the ice so i guess yeah. i'm an ice cube yeah we didn't and it really didn't come we went out and took it it was waiting for us so we had to go get it like right. cause it, it's not going to come to you right. it's definitely not going to come to putting you a lot of right. a lot of nights you got to you know so talk focus. to me so since since making that decision like about all right months so, ago, yes. what's happened? we started the organization then the ted talk that mm -hmm. i was telling you about how life is like lemonade right then we did the ignite talk then we ignite, just ignite yeah, okay. ignite um then around that time i started the workout videos that mm -hmm. a few of them went viral one on of the, them got on the instagram you know instagram and facebook right um one on instagram one hit like three hundred and thirty thousand views uh -huh. um i also did a skit with the influencer fat boy sse he's a big instagram influencer uh -huh. he's actually acting in Ma master p movie uh -huh. shout out to fat boy gang those are my fellas over there okay um I did that, so a lot of people seen me on there, and that was very um, motivational for like individuals that's not so much not as outgoing. Yeah, that's you know not as confident. Yeah, they, exactly. There's a lot of disabled individuals that um, you know, they don't get out too often, so they don't know what type of resources they have. Right. But they have everybody has a cell phone and social media these days, right. so people. So you've been doing a lot that. of research yeah. in um, with regard to. Uh, people with disabilities. Yeah, I've been doing it. I have it like and so yeah. what 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 have been your discoveries? That the unemployment rate is like outrageous right mm -hmm. now. Like for the last 20 years, the unemployment rate for a disabled individual, um disabled individuals been above 70%. Wow. Yeah. So just think about it like one out of every 5 people um declare themselves as being disabled, right? Which is about 20% of the population. And you could just do the math with 20% of the population, whatever it is, it's an astronomical number of people right. that's unemployed with, um, you know, no way of making ends meet. Right. And then the poverty rate is twice the amount of an able-bodied individual. So it's like a double-edged sword right, right there. Like, how are you going to support your family? How are you going to have a family? Exactly. But a lot of individuals have families right. when they get injured or whatever the case may be. Right. What, who's to say that somebody could stop them from living their life? That's a part of life to, you know, have a family and right. to support your family. So, so when you spoke to me, you had told me that you wanted to inspire people because there are people calling you and getting in contact with you after seeing you on, in, in, uh, after seeing you on Instagram and social media yeah. and stuff like that. And um, you were telling me about people who said that they weren't dating. Yeah, there's a lot of individuals that said they don't date for whatever reason. Do you um, date? Yeah, I date. I date. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm I'm trying to stay away from all late because I'm focused right now. <laughs> but oh, the late ass, yeah, leave him alone. That, he keeps me focused. He be like, uh, 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 G. Yeah, we gotta she, stay she's taking too much of your time, bro. You, you can't have the, not right now. Right, right. So, so you like the ladies. Yeah, I love I love them. I like them ladies. Too, but we I can love get back them. to the ladies yeah. when it's time to, we'll yeah. know when it's time. We'll know when it's I have Not a lot right of now. fun. I had a lot of fun. I have right. it, it's just so fun. Ju let's just get real Life here. So you you have sex, you yeah. meet girls, you have sex and things like yeah. that. So you're not like it doesn't your disability and please tell me, tell me what you call it. You don't call it a disability. I call you it call able it. with limitations, but right. Yeah, so you call it able body with limitations. And the reason why I say that is because you see some stairs basically if, if you look at stairs you'll say hi i'm gonna get up which but i did i i wanted to know how anybody else you know you you could walk right up i maybe can't walk up but i could get to the next flight right so it doesn't really matter that i can't walk up the stairs physically because right. i could still get up to the next flight right. in one way or another right so it's just a limitation that's it it's so basically he could do everything that we can do but you just do it slower, maybe. Yeah, or I mean, differently. some things I do it faster, some things. Yeah. Yeah, so, I, you know, it's a balance, but, or differently. You're right about that. So, it's all in one. And so, what would you tell a, a person that 
was disabled either by recently or it's been a while since they've been what oh, yeah. would you what how would you inspire them to get themselves up and out what would you say to them well one thing i will say is life goes on right. and if you look at your watch the time will never stop ticking right so being at the time will never stop ticking if time doesn't take a break why should you take a break right so that's what i'll tell them and and you could just look at me i'm like life goes on like it's something happens you just got to get over it like right. it's not the end of the world and it goes back to the old cliche what doesn't kill you make you stronger right so you still alive like you have your whole life ahead of you go do what you got to do right. don't don't sit there and have pity for yourself so i had um a few months ago i had um a, a guest on his name is billy and billy lost his leg in okay. you know from the i think from the knee down or just above the knee down um, in a motorcycle accident. He's a thrill oh. seeker. So he completely lost that leg. And he says that um, his body, when his, his brain still thinks that he has a whole leg, and so his brain the, heats his whole body so he gets really hot. So it's like in the dead of winter, and he was walking around in shorts. Yeah. So does the heat affect your body in any particular way? Oh, not really. Not really. Not anything that... It's not abnormal right. that I would call abnormal. The heat doesn't, the weather doesn't really affect, affect me you. in any way. But some people it does. It just doesn't affect me. Right. So I wouldn't, you know, if someone said that the heat, if I would believe them because right. of the fact that I have heard stories of people can't adjust to the cold or can't adjust to the heat. So. Right. So now, like, what I did learn the other day was um, something about the vertebrates, like yeah. T2 and things like that. Yeah, like, it start the C, usually if you got injured in the C area, you consider it a quadriplegic, mm -hmm. where you have limited to no mobility mm -hmm. of all four of your limbs. And you saw that in the hospital. Oh, yeah, when I was in a hospital, in the re rehabilitation hospital, it was individuals that had injuries that high where... If you're like a C1, for instance, you probably have a trach and you probably don't have any um, way of contracting like oxygen, right. your lungs and stuff like that is affected. Right. So Because you told me that you saw somebody brushing their teeth. Yeah. And that inspired you to see. Yeah, I've seen somebody that was unable to use their arms mm -hmm. brushing their teeth. and. We take that for granted. Right. I took that for granted being a para. I have limited or no mobility of both of two right. of my limbs. But as a para, I was like, oh, man, like, look how this individual right here is really brushing his teeth. And that looks like the hardest thing that could possibly be done. And they're doing it smiling, happy. So. Right. So you were inspired. Yeah. Like, it's more, it became more or less me like, all right, I know after and through experience as well i've seen individuals i always remembered individuals like that i'm like i gotta go back and like help them like right. it'll be messed up for me to just see people getting discriminated against right but you've have, experienced yeah that. yeah i experienced that on plenty of occasions it's i just so i want to ask you so yeah. you're you experience you're a black man yeah so do you get double whammy is it like you're a black man and you're a paraplegic yeah yeah, no, I would say yeah and no. Uh -huh. Maybe for like, if I go to apply for a job, it'd be like almost impossible. Right, because you applied for jobs and you did yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, millions of, I've applied for quite a few jobs and it was like turned down after turned down after turned down. So, but that's another reason why we started the Garrison Red Project. Like, why are we going to go help build something when we could build something of our own? Right. And we could build it and then it'll be there forever. And right. we could pass it on to our kids. Whatever we want to do with it, it's right. ours. Right. And the way the government, the way to, no, nah, I won't say government, the way the world is set up now, you got to have something of your own in order to become and, you know, for your self actualization to mm -hmm. get to where your hierarchy, you need something of gotcha. your own. Well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. So, um, Tell me, um, tell me, ask me, ask me yeah. to ask you a question. Tell me a question that you want me to ask you. Oh, I would say that. Uh, What's something that you want me to ask you? I don't know. Let me think of something. What? That was on the spot right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely was. It's always on the spot question. 
there's something that you want or there's something that you want to do or something that you want to be exposed to. Oh, well, why do I want to be mayor? Well, yeah, why would you want to be the mayor of New York City? Because if I become the mayor of New York City, it could I could impact the lives of so many individuals. Right. And you can only impact individuals from the top. You cannot, you voice this at the bottom. There's millions Please of- Please start. Yeah, but there's times I had riff raff with this person and that person. And now that I got a little bit of, um, I won't say power, but like people know who I am now. Notoriety. Yeah, it's like the, the conversation changes. Like, oh, come in. Right. It's not so much, who are you? No, now you got to come in. I need you to come in. Like right. things like that which is new, like that's new for me. And I know it's new for and, him. And how are you managing that? Real well, yeah, we, we love it. Like, yeah. we take our time, we take our time. Yeah. We don't meet new people. Meet new people. Uh -huh. Yeah, like I said, we, it's never a problem for me to like meet people like and meet friends. Right. So this experience been wonderful. Like, I'm we just running with it. Yeah, you're thankful for that. So what, yeah. what else do you want? You just did a, um, was it? Was it a, I did an Apple, Apple commercial. Apple yeah, I did that. You met with the mayor last week. Oh, Which yeah, that was a big week. week. Yeah, last week was last a big week. week. The, we got the Apple commercial that finally we got, that we seen it being released. Um, So it was released last week. Then um, we went to Gracie Mansion. I told everybody I was going to have a picture with the mayor before we left. I had that picture with the mayor. I made sure I got that shot with de Blasio. Right. And then I went to Team USA um, powerlift, para powerlifting camp. Oh, you went camp. to the powerlifting camp. Yeah, that and was on how, Saturday. Tell them how... Tell, oh, tell that was good. I them. mean, it was so crazy because, like, this through one that, of the things that... One of the things, like, through that epiphany that we had, another thing was we got to get in every lane. Like, if you want to be successful and you really want to have this impact, you got to go everywhere. Like inclusion means everywhere. Right. And so for everyone. Yeah. So I was in a gym and I met this dude named Jason. He's good friends with the commissioner of for, um, people with disabilities mm -hmm. for the mayor's office or whatever. So Jason, I met Jason in the gym and he's like, yo, I want you to play on my flag football team. So I'm like, flag football? Nah, bro. I'm not falling on the floor. Nah, I got a modeling <laughs> career. I'm trying to pursue. <laughs> you know, like, he like, nah, come out. He like, I'm like, yeah, I used to play sports, so I do understand. So, boom, I came out or whatever. I'm going to ask you to hold that. I'm going to hold it. Yeah, let's hold, hold this one. And, we're gonna be, and we'll be right back and yeah. you can hear more stories. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant, and on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. Are you feeling unhappy with your body, shape, or size? Ever feel out of control with food? I'm Elizabeth Tripp, your host of Nourish the Soul. Join me to uncover the root to these imbalances and discover a permanent solution to living a healthy life. Join us every Wednesday at my new time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on talkradio.nyc. TalkingAlternative.com
Hi, and we're back. This is Noreen Sumter on Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way. And we are speaking to Garrison Red. That's R-E-double-D. Yep. From Get the Garrison right. Red <laughs> Project. So he's just going to continue on his story. Yeah, so I met the guy, Jason, I was telling y'all about. We doing the flag football. From the flag football, I meet another individual who's the um, head of the Wheelchair Sports Found Federation. So he comes to me like, I heard you want to play like sports. So I'm like, I'll play sports, but I'm very competitive. I was a standout football player in high school. So I'm very competitive. So I'm like, if I'm going to play, I'm all in, but it can't be a team sport because I'm at the point in my life where I don't want to play a team sport. I want all the credit for all the hard work I put in. <laughs> I don't want to share the credit with four other people on a basketball court. I, I put this work in. I want the credit. That's it. <laughs> well, that's honest. So he's like, you, know, you could do track and field. You could do shot put, field, like throwing sports and wheelchair racing. So I'm like, all right. He puts me on this team. This is how I'm like, I'm committed committed now. I'm like, yeah, we're going to do this. So he's like, yeah, I'm going to train you. We're going to go around the world, Olympics, everywhere. Watch this, bro. So I'm like, I right, bet. Now, in the past, I went out for other sports, but I wasn't, my mom wasn't into it at the time. I'm like, I just want to get, make money, go to school, make money, and that's that. Right. But then I'm like, I can help people. I'm thinking, yeah, this could be on a larger scale. All I got to do is train. I could train. So I do wheelchair racing. Trains. Now, wheelchair racing was on a whole nother level. But I looked on YouTube and saw how much people watched it. I said, this is a good sport right here. I'm like, this is, I could get fame quickly. Right. But I, I'm strong. So the wheelchair racing coming along, and then I go to a meet um, where they have power lifting. So coach, like, how much you weigh? I'm like, I don't know. I think I weigh like 140 pounds or something. I don't, the, that's another thing. The medical facilities never have scales right. for individuals in a wheelchair. And it's just like mind boggling. How you go to the doctor, they ask you, they ask you yeah, how much you weigh. Yeah. So they need to change that. There need to be some type of policy and well, action. you weighed yourself? At the meets, I got to weigh myself. Right. So I'm okay. telling coach I weigh 140. I get on a scale. He like, you weigh like 120.5. So I'm like, 120.5? And then I was like, perfect. <laughs> that means that everybody's weaker. I thought I was 140. <laughs> I'm not that big. Good. Perfect. So I lift. The first two times I I I, I filed because I didn't understand the, the cadence, cadence system. Right. So then he's telling me like, "Yo, you got this." He's in my ear like, "Got this." Mind you, he's like one of the spotters also. So he's like, "Yo, just focus on listening to them." So I do the last lift, and that's like two hundred and fifty pounds, right. and I did it. And this is an open weight class, so they got people that weigh like two forty, two fifty. So I outlifted everybody. Right. So then I. I didn't know what was going to become of that. I go home the next day. So a few days go by and I get a Facebook message from the performance manager for Team USA. Right. Like, you need to come for, vibe for a spot on Team USA powerlifting team. Right. So this is Team USA powerlifting team yeah. where you are becoming a member of the Olympics. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I do be clear so they understand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you. Shabby. That's why you're a good host right there. You know, <laughs> you you helping me out, the assist right there. So I do that. And it's like like I, I already manifested all of these things I was gonna do. That's why it's not really new when people ask like how y'all feel about all the accomplishments so quickly. We like this is how we planned it. Right. Like this is exactly what we said we was gonna do. Right. And it's just the beginning. Like I don't even I look back and still feel the same way I felt last year this right. time. Like I gotta figure out how we're gonna get to the next yes. level. Right. Yeah. It's just that now we have a a plan and a path that we going down. So we gotta see where this leads. And we're not quitters, so it gotta Wherever it ends, it's trust me. End somewhere right. positive. Yeah, really and it like might it. not end in this lifetime for us. Right, right. That's the goal. Beginning. Yeah, that's the goal. This never to end. Like right. you're just that. gonna keep going, and then. So, what do you need for your foundation? What I need, we how need, are you funding it? Do we need people funders? to donate. We get people to donate. Uh -huh. Donate. Um, donations are key. 
right now. And we're working on, you know, writing grants to different organizations mm -hmm. in order to get funding through that way. That way we could help provide individuals that are disabled with proper assistive equipment because right. there's individuals in this world that don't have the tools they need to get outside. Right. And, and all, we look at it as just a cane. What's, a, what's the cost of an average wheelchair? Ooh, an average wheelchair, a, a heavy aluminum wet wheelchair. That's might, an old school. That you're that's an old, old school. This is right? the old one that you get at the hospital. That's like $800 on average brand right. new. Being that that's $800, that is not adequate for someone that relies on a wheelchair right. on a daily basis. They don't have rubber wheels. It doesn't have a place for a cushion. So that's not really, it's not ideal for someone to use every day. So if somebody has that wheelchair, more than likely they confine to their house. Right. And that's terrible. And also there's people with improper prosthetics. Right. Like uh, amputees that need prosthetic limbs. Um, kids, there's kids. If you don't have, you know, proper medical coverage and proper insurance, then who's going to pay for a prosthetic leg that might run you twelve thousand dollars might right. run you fifteen thousand so what dollars what, what would you, if if you were to give away wheelchairs like just say what would it cost for an average wheelchair the average wheelchair no, that what, i would give away wheelchair. that someone can use if yes. they rely on it daily yes that could be about two thousand dollars i mean i sit on a titanium wheelchair it's a tie light it's one of the better brands but there is other brands that are um good that will be suitable for any individual um I mean, the metal is different. It'll be aluminum, but it'll be similar shape right. where they can, it'd be compact enough where they could get around and maneuver. Right. Because maneuverability is a big thing as right. well. Because your, your wheelchair is six pounds, you said? No, no, no. Nah, my wheelchair is more. Well, fully assembled is 30 pounds, but the frame probably only weigh about 15 pounds. Okay. Yeah. But um, then is it, the, is it the lighter, the better? The lighter is the better because it's a it's a lot easier for you to maneuver. Right. And like I drive, so being that I drive, I have to disassemble the wheelchair and put it over, basically um, lift it over my body. Right. So you can't have a heavy wheelchair to do something like that. Right. Um. But you can lift it over your body. Yeah. You I lift. Could. But then and then there's another thing. Like I probably lift more than that. Oh. We downplaying <laughs> it. Like I'm like close to. So you can, you can actually lift me. I could lift a lot of things, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. Back to that, yeah. So a wheelchair, yeah, about fifteen hundred for aluminum one, and see, we take for granted like how we maneuver. Or if it's a quadriplegic individual, he definitely needs like a motorized chair. Right. Motorized chairs start at like twenty thousand for a good one, brand new. Right. These insurance companies make a killing. Mm -hmm. A killing. We're not going to talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> a killing. In my um, neighborhood, there's a lady, and she has a disability. But her disability is something that develops over years. What's happening is literally her body is turned into stone. Oh, wow. Right? So, she, but she's up and she's out. She rides the subway. She rides the bus. She's I like doing that. Her I like thing. that. No, I mean, I like, like she has a little motorized thing. She just pushes it forward and backwards. She mm. can't move the neck. I mean, she's solid. She's exactly. Stuck. Right. So imagine living like that every day. She's out every day. And she's out and she every day. She goes to all events, all the free events. You see her at the free events and things like that. Right. But I she's like that. actively see, engaged. Now, individuals like that is what motivate me I to keep to going. Right. Because she knows that the odds aren't good for her. The odds her. are not good for her. But she's still active. She's still outside and right. she's still living her life. See, I don't have like sympathy for someone that has everything. The world has given them everything and they just want to stay in the house and mm -hmm. feel sorry for their self yeah. and complain. So we got three minutes to completion. Yeah. So is there anything or anyone that you'd like it to shout out to? Um, would you like to give your website all right. your address? And donations. <laughs> yeah, I would like to give you my website. It's called the Garrison Red Project dot org. Um, you, I mean, you don't even have to donate. You could just subscribe because strength is in numbers. Right. So as long as you subscribe and become a member, I'm cool with that. Um, also, you can follow us on um Instagram. It's the Garrison Red Project. Um, I also have another Instagram as well. That's Big, Big Money, Money G? G with two Big Y's. Big Money G. Yeah, because that's. 
I was into finance, so got no little money. It's all about the big money. So right. that was the finance part of me. Um, what else? Shout out to my boys at MILF Dad. Shout, out, shout to out to Connie G. Right, Connie. Connie. Shout out to Fashion Week Brooklyn and yes, Ricky. Ricky. And who else? Um, shout out to all the supporters out there. I love all of y'all. Shout out to everybody. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, if you donate, it's going to a good cause. We're going to help people with that need assistive devices get the adequate devices that they need so that way they can live their life. Okay. So I just want to say thank you very much. And Harrison. thank you, Noreen. Like, really, thank you for reaching out and, yeah. and like, fulfilling on one of my dreams, yeah. which was to have you on the show. And uh, because I said it and I saw it and yeah. then you reached out and I was like, let's do it. And um, yeah, I want to say thank you to Ricky and Connie and yeah. all those people because without them, I wouldn't have met you. Uh, yeah, that's a fact. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? That's absolutely. <laughs> it's like the circle just revolves. Yeah, that's why you know? every time they need a hand with something, I'm there for them. They could call me anytime. Right. Nobody else could call me like that. But. <laughs> well, I want to call you like You could call me, Noreen. You, you are part of this too. <laughs> all right. So... That was the show with Garrison Red, and you can reach him on Instagram, and you can reach him on um, Facebook, at his Facebook. Facebook, Garrison Red. You can, I mean, like, he is everywhere, and I'm sure you're going to be up to some really big things, oh. and I, I, I would love to uh, vote for you to become mayor of this city. Thank you. I mayor appreciate Red. that. And I'm, I'm sure other people that. would, too. You'll have an army of people behind you if it's a popularity contest then i feel sorry for the opponent right <laughs> so until next week this is noreen sumter signing off from beyond potential live life your way all right everybody bye, bye. you're listening to the talking alternative network